It could happen. We're ready to test the hydraulic system with pressure from the pumps. Bart, standing by, ready with the towel. Or are you just protecting yourself? I'm protecting my hands. Oh, okay. So I got the aft and the forward valve shut off, so all we're gonna do is pressurize this portion of the system. If that works, we'll start opening up the rest of the system. So these relays have this little manual override on them, which is kind of cool, so I can use them as a switch. I forgot that I gotta get power to these so they can get power to these, which are essentially relays too. They're just big solenoids. They let a lot of power through from one side to the other side. So now with uh, this on, I turn this breaker on. Yeah, there it is. It powers one of them. And then I can power the other one through here. Yeah, it's on. So both of these things are powered up. I'll have a connection from here to here. When I turn these breakers on, I run the pumps. It threw a breaker. Wow, look at this. That didn't look good. It's throwing a breaker. Huh. Okay, maybe we don't have the pumps wired right. Yep, there's 26.5 volts. There it goes, kicks. It just immediately shorted it. Yep. Well, let's try reversing the polarity and see if it's happier. On. Okay. Woo, that was a nice arc. Most DC motors will just run backwards if you wire them up, you know, negative, positive, positive, negative. Okay, go ahead. Kick, kick the breaker. You kick the breaker off. Yep. Damn. Yep. That's not good. Well, I'll have to take the motor off and see if it just spins without the pump on there. So we found a uh, 40 amp breaker back here, so we're going to borrow it. Okay, 40 amp breaker's in now. Nope. Well, that's not good. 40 amps isn't enough. We got something wrong with that motor. Oh, right there on my side, I say it's a 36 amp, 24 volt pump. So maybe we had the polarity right in the first place. It could be we, now we got a big enough breaker, but the polarity is wrong. So let's try switching that back. Yep. So it's still not happy. So the problem's going to be down in the motor, or it doesn't like 40 amps. It needs more than that. I can't imagine it needs 40, more than 40 amps to get started. Just a 36 amp motor. Let's take the pump off, see if the motor spins without the pump. Here it comes. That's blind. Yeah, the motor turns fine, so it's not the motor. Hit it. Oh. Flip the breaker again, huh? Yep. Shit. Well, so we eliminated the pump. It's got to be the motor, so we're going to pull the motor out. Well, we're going to try giving it a 12-volt jump off our batteries down there, the lead acid that crank over the engine. Red is negative, right? No, red's positive. Are you sure? Hit it on there, hold it. It's running. It doesn't like the, uh, it's not the breaker's volt. not big enough, or it's not 24 volt. You know, we might as well see if it runs backwards with this test too. So go ahead and hit it again. Oops. All right, so which way is it running? Hard to tell. That's spinning clockwise here. That's counterclockwise. Yeah, so let's switch them and see if this motor's reversible. Yeah, I know. Okay, so it doesn't reverse the direction. It's always the same way and it runs great on 12 volt. But they sold it as a 24 volt motor. So let's try it with 24 volts without the breaker involved or with a bigger breaker. Well, we could. We could hook it directly to the 24 volt battery, but that's nothing I want to do to my 24 volt battery. It's it should work. Well, I don't know. If it's a 12 volt motor and you hook it to a 24 volt motor battery, it should just spin twice as fast. Well, it's throwing a 30 amp breaker. No, it's throwing a 40 amp breaker. Yeah, yeah. And it's supposed to pull a 36 amp load. So let's go see if we got a bigger breaker. Okay, testing it with a 63 amp breaker. Oh, turn it off. Well, uh, it flipped the breaker. The motor spun. The motor spun and then it flipped right off. So, is it a 12 volt motor, or is it a breaker that's too small still? I think it's a 12 volt motor. I'm thinking the same thing. Now we're pushing 60 amp. That's 63 the, amps, and it still throws the, the breaker. Spun it a little bit, and I think it's a 12 volt motor. The other thing we could do is wire them into series with 24 volt, because then. The first motor would draw off 12 volt, and the second motor would draw off 12 volt. So the voltage would be right. We get to run both pumps off 24 volt, but you gotta have both of them running. 
Okay, the motors are wired in series. Parallel is easy to think about. You bring, you know, positive down here, then you run another wire with a positive here, and then the current flows in parallel through the motors and back out through a negative on one motor and a negative on the other motor. In series, power flows in here on this motor, flows through the motor, out the other side down there, and back around to the other motor, and then it flows through it and then back to the batteries. So the motors are in series. This one will absorb 12 volts and this one will absorb 12 volts because 24 volts is coming in there, which is look. And we took both pumps off because we're thinking we don't want the loads to be different across the motors. Okay, so we got our amp meter out on a jumper cable and watch this. One motor running. It started off at 40 amps, it's dropping down. No load, of course, the pumps are disconnected. Now I'll go over here, we'll do two of them in series. That's working too. Oh yeah, it's running. And they're both good motors, they both like 12 volts, they like both will work. They hate 24 volts and they will not run, they throw the freaking breaker. They're only pulling 30, 40 amps here, so the, 30, the 63 amp breaker is fine. So it's got to be something with the voltage. Yeah, they're running 12 volt in series. So there should be a voltage drop of 6 volts across this motor and 6 across this one. Let's see. Ground. There. 5.6 volts. So that's what I expected. Should be 12 volts across here and here. Yeah, 11. 0.5, So, the voltage drop is doing what we thought in series, it's just not doing it for 24 volts. And they don't sound like they're running fast. Listen, let's see if it runs, sounds like it should be, sound like it runs faster this way. Oh yeah, that yeah, sounds like twice as fast. Yeah. Oh yeah. So they're happy doing it with 12 to 6, but not 24 to 12. Both can be turning, all right, hit it. Oh. We had the wrong breaker up there. We had a 40 amp and we had switched in 63 and they're running. Oh yeah, that's definitely both of them. Let me do a voltage on check. So we should see 12 volts. 13.1, yeah. That's what we want. Sweet. Hit it. 106. Yeah, that's the problem. So they make breakers that are slower to react. The 63 is actually doing 106 amps for a little while. The 40, it didn't make it. But you can have, you know, faster reacting. Uh, and I got kind of middle of the road one there. So we're good. We used the 63 amp. We put them in series. Now the question now is how much more amperage is it going to require for them to pull these two uh, pumps here because it's got to start both of them. Okay, the pumps are hooked up. We're going to make pressure. Hit it. Oh. All right. They started and ran, so they can't turn the pumps. And the question is, how much pressure can they make? You know, if we open up the rear system, we'll see it on the valve over there, the gauge. Well, that 63 amp breaker is going to be just on the edge. Look at that, you hear them? Yeah. They got the air through the system. That regulator must be blowing off now. Put a piece of tape on there to mark where the oil is. Nothing on the gauge. Oh, stop. I see a problem. You gotta open the valve that supplies the oil to the pumps. There is our oh, problem. Oh, so they're running dry. Well, they're fresh. Yeah, they're running dry. That sure sounds different. Yeah. yeah, gauge is coming up. Oh. Okay, yeah, we saw movement. So we got some pressure. Let's see what we did. You can hear them. You can sure hear them. Yeah, it was yeah. Going. You know, the thing would be we need to watch the amp meter too and see what it's actually doing. So the question is, is that breaker big enough to start these pumps when they have to start loaded with pressure? Well, yeah, it's all gone. Is it really? It is all gone. Sucked it all away. So we fill it up. Okay, it's oiled up. Wow. So 
was starting under load. They did start. That's good. About 480 pounds on it. That breaker's gonna throw. That's 200 amps. Yeah. yeah. On. 204, 205. He was up to like 800 PSI before oh, trip. Holy shit. So it's doing pretty good. Wow. It, it definitely is pulling 200 amps. So I'm going to open the valve to the accumulator. The pressure that's currently in the system, which is just pipes and hoses, will go into the accumulator and it will run the pumps for a little while and charge the accumulator up a bit. So opening the valve, we should see that drop off to next to zero. There it goes. I yeah. heard it. Yeah, you can hear it. Hey, there's the, the first leak. I don't think I ever tightened the accumulator into it. No, oh, yeah, I just pushed that in there by hand. I never tightened it down. That's a nice one. Okay, go ahead and turn on all this build up a little pressure. If it holds pressure and it doesn't come down, it means we got no leaks. These check valves aren't 100%. They're always going to leak a little bit. Pull that. Pull that. And then I can pull all the hoses out of here. Alrighty. Good God. It's like giving birth. How'd you get it in there? Huh? Kind of the opposite of what I just did. <laughs> okay, so now we can see leaks, if we have any. Found and fixed another leak, and we're happy that it's holding oil. It actually still has some pressure in the system. So we're going to open up the forward part of the boat, which is this valve right here. That pressure will drop off. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, that's everything. So these hoses will supply the deck crane. So they just have plugs in them. That should be a no-brainer. We pressure tested with nitrogen gas that much. And then the lines come in here, they go overhead. One of those is air, the other two are hydraulic. So this should be pretty easy peasy. We get to work the anchor if this works. Yeah, looks, like oil. looks like oil. I don't think it is oil. I think it's water. That hatch up there where the deck crane is going to mount leaks a little bit. You can get down there and look it. Get down there and look it. Go ahead. Hold your breath. Oh, I just saw a drip. Oh, uh, you're just saying that. You're no. just saying that. I just saw a drip of water. All right, I'll get down there and look it. No! Don't! Oh, sweet rainwater. Man, it's only 93 amps. You hear the air going through it? Man, that's beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's here a little bit. I heard nothing. Oh, wait a minute. We're turned off. Ah, the sound of oil. I heard it. Yeah, me too. All right, I think that's all the pressure it had. Hey, a little celebration blast. <laughs> even, even got a giggle out of the kids next door. No, yeah, no, give it like 30 seconds. Well, that sounds good. Hey, it's moving. Check it out. Is fantastic. No leaks. Don't try to stop that thing from turning. Uh, he must have turned it off or through the breaker. Kick it on again, and I'm going to go shut the valve. So just let it run until it throws the breaker. All right. Now all this pull turns. Going the other way. Just a little bit. 